Hey guys, Jim here. What you're looking at is not your run-of-the-mill average everyday spinning top. As a matter of fact, there's never been anything before even remotely like it. What you're looking at here is 28 individual components machined and put together into one wonderfully balanced spinning top made by Rich Stadler at Billet Spin. This thing is nearly unbelievable. Take a look at this. See if we can give you some nice clean views here without my fingers in the way. Timascus, Damascus, Ruby, stainless steel spikes, and tritium. All that together to create what is honestly the most jaw-dropping thing I think I've ever seen. Let's get the mirror out of the way for just a moment and focus primarily on the beauty and the manufacturing of this incredible top. So what you're looking at is one piece of Damascus, 15 rods of stainless steel. That's what creates all of these spikes. Take it. Take a good look at that. One ruby ball for the contact point and two different pieces of Timascus. All put together with nine tritium tubes. Now it's easy to find the tubes here but check this out. Look at the stem. This thing is absolutely amazing. So he's gone through and made a channel inside of the stem, put a steel rod in there that has cut out windows holding the tritium vials. Then of course he had to make the cut out windows in the stem itself to be able to see all that. There's 27 hours of design just in the stem. Now think about this. 27 hours of trial and error just to design the stem. There's about 40 hours total in the design of the overall top. Rich was documenting the build of this on his uh, Facebook page, the Billet Spin Facebook page. And people were just amazed at the amount of work that went into this thing. And of course, everybody kept asking, well, how much, how much, how much? I want one, I want one, I want one! I gotta have one! He says, well, I'm only building one, and if I were to put this amount of work into another top, it would have to be $6,000. Now think about that. A $6,000 top. That's insane. But when you factor in the design hours, you, you factor in that it took him three full shop days from open to close with several machines running just to make the components and put all of this together. You're paying for time more than you pay for anything else, as with anything when it comes to machining. You know, when you're, when you're having something CNC'd, you're paying by the minute for however long those cycles are going to be. $6,000 for a top. I don't know if there's a record for the world's most expensive pocket spinning top, but this has got to be up there. And it is truly amazing. I don't know if I can give you a really tight shot here, but I'm going to try just the stem. Camera doesn't want to focus on something that small. Come on. I'll do the best I can here, guys. That might work. What I'm trying to focus on are the holes where the spikes are coming out of the stem. And the camera's really working hard here. It's trying. 
Take a good look at that. And then down here. The incredible degree of precision that goes into this. I mean, it's, it's breathtaking. It's staggering. Even if you don't appreciate tops, and there are plenty of people that just don't get it, you have to look at it from the mechanical side of things. And all of the work that went into making this, it really is incredible. Now, one of the questions people have been asking, besides how much will it cost, are about the spikes on the bottom. They're set far enough away from the center and high enough that they don't ever actually come into contact. Actually, I can spin it on my carbon fiber here for a second. Um, they don't actually come in contact when the top goes to stop. See so if we can slow it down and get it to stop. Come on. All you hear is the outside rim making contact. Not only is this an incredible achievement to take 27, or excuse me, 28 components and make a top like this, but the fact that it's so well balanced, the fact that it spins so well, uh, I've been getting about seven to eight minute spins out of it. I'm sure there's more in it, but I've only had it for about a day. And I haven't spun it too often because I want to get some photography done and I want to get this video done before it starts showing any signs of wear. Um, I've already gotten a bunch of uh, private messages on Facebook going, are you actually going to spin that thing or are you just going to put it in a display case? It's made to spin. It's made to have fun with. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time staring at it, but it's made to use. It's like everything else I have. I... I drive my car in the rain. I use all my knives. You know, it's, it's just all the things that I collect that I'm into that I enjoy, I use. I'm still blown away. I mean, I, I'm, I'm taking pauses here because it's hard to put into words how I feel about this. Because Rich made this specifically for me and as a gift. And the, the generosity displayed there is... I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's, 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 it's overwhelming, it's, it's, it's truly incredible. And I, I'm really fortunate to have uh, you know, been able to become friends with Rich and, and uh, showcase some of the beautiful work that he's done here on my channel. And he's the guy that got me into tops. I never, never once considered pocket tops, or spinning tops as being something I would get into. And he says, you know what? Over these great many years, you have influenced me in so many ways into buying friggin' watches that it's time for me to try to influence you on a bad habit. Well, not really a bad habit, but you get what I'm saying. So I said, okay, fine, let's try this out. And he, he makes a couple tops, he sends them out to me, and I instantly got it. I instantly enjoyed it. I really, really do. And now I've got a, a fairly, for, for me, a fairly sizable collection. There are guys out there with hundreds of tops. I don't foresee myself going that route but um, you know I've probably got about 18 20 tops and I enjoy them I keep them on my desk at work and I spin them and they relax me and they calm me especially on a highly stressful day and I appreciate the workmanship because everything that he does is so different not only from other makers but even from his previous tops he never duplicates a design when the design is done that's it. It's done. And that also helps to increase the value. You know, his tops that he sells for 120 to 150 bucks. you know, I use the Kraken for an example. I, I did a showcase on that. You know, that was a, about 100 and, I want to say it was 140 bucks, 135 something like that. And uh, the last one I saw sell went for $900. Because when he's done making it, that's it. You're never going to see it again. And everybody that's handled, oops, excuse me, sorry about that. Everybody that's handled one of his tops recognizes the extreme degree of workmanship that he puts into each one, making everything he touches really a collector's item. And that's a big deal. There are some great top makers out there, man. There really, really are. But for me, for my personal taste, I like intricate things. I think Rich is just at the top, no pun intended. 
I enjoy a lot of my simpler tops. But there's something about having this extreme degree of machining that really excites me, that really gets me going. Now I'm going to add in at the end of this video, as long as my camera will allow me to do it, I will give you a, um, a spinning video with the lights off so you can see the tritium tubes and the pattern that they make, the pattern of light, both in the stem and in the outer rim. Hoping that it comes out okay. My camera does not like to work in low light situations, so I'll do the best that I can with it. I still sit here and I stare at this thing and I think to myself, I, I can't believe that I actually have this, that Rich made this one and it's sitting here in my collection. And come Monday morning, it's going to travel to the office with me and join all of its little brothers and sisters. And it's going to be used and enjoyed and loved. I just had to show the world, in, as best I could in HD video, just how incredible the workmanship is on this. And the fact that we don't know of anyone else that's ever achieved this level. 28 components in one top, perfectly balanced, wonderfully stable, and beautiful. I don't see it as being overdone. I think it's just perfect. The combination of materials is great. And that's the only thing I could take credit for. When, when we first started talking about this, um, you know, he kind of wanted to bounce design ideas off me. I said, man, there's no way I would ever be able to think of anything nearly as cool as what you can do. I don't know what the limitations are. I don't know what what barriers you're wanting to break here. What what you know pioneering things that you want to do. So I'm I'm not going to hinder you in any way by by saying what I want. So we just kind of agreed that I could uh, help pick out the material. So I said, you know, I love Timascus. I love Damascus, and it's high time that you put some tritium tubes in one of your tops. So he says, okay, I'm going to work with that, and I'll see what happens. And over the course of probably about a month, he would come back and go, oh, I just had this great idea. You're going to love this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And I never really actually even saw any renderings till about a week, maybe three or four days before he started actually making this thing. And all he showed me was the stem and gave me a basic idea of what he was doing and I didn't know it was going to have any spikes or anything like that so before he even started building it he put up a little thread on the uh, Facebook page and he asked people hey uh, you feel like trying to come up with a name for it and so there's probably like a hundred replies by the time I first saw the thread and I said listen I said until we see what it looks like you know you really can't name it you really have to feel the name coming from the design so once he showed me all of the spikes that he was going to put on this thing, and especially the three spikes coming up from the top of the stem, I said, well, it's got to be the wraith. Absolutely has to be the wraith. Because it reminds me, if you remember, if you ever watched Lord of the Rings, I'm not a big Lord of the Rings geek over it. I've seen the movies. I enjoyed the movies. But the, uh, the ring wraiths, the Nazgul, if you look at the helmets that they had on, with these big spikes coming up off the top seeing that on the stem that's what did it for me I'm like it has to be the wraith no way around it and luckily everybody else liked the idea Rich liked the idea so uh, that is the official name it is the billet spin wraith I'm glad I had a chance to share this with you guys I'm glad you got a chance to see it close up I'm gonna pop the mirror out of here one more time and try to give you as best I can some more close-up looks at it So that beautifully etched Damascus in the center. And you see where the Timascus comes around. And he's driven the spikes through the Timascus and Damascus to hold everything together. It's brilliant. And yeah, by the way, those are actually really, really, really sharp. Luckily, it's not the kind of thing that you're ever going to come in contact with when you're spinning it. Uh, but this is this is uh, probably the only pocket top that's not really good for the pocket. I would not throw this in my pocket. It's going to tear your butt up when you go to reach in for it. Look at that.
and a really nice pattern of Timascus as well. Very, very nicely done. I apologize that the camera is not focusing as well as I hoped it would, but I generally don't do such close-up shots on such small things. Just breathtaking. I'll be sure to include a lot of my photography in here so that you get a chance to, uh, to better see some of these details. But there it is, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will catch you on the next video.